Here's a mishmash of ideas which I've come across. The first three are vaguely related that they're all folding or unfolding things and functional. This one, for instance, would you believe is actually a coat hanger? But it doesn't appear to be until you open up the lazy tongs action there and then you see a coat hanger. And would support quite a good weight of coat, that one, actually. It bends down at the end of the arm. So that's a folding coat hanger. And I do like this mechanism, the neatness of which it goes back into a little box like that. And these ones also unfold and functional. It's a toothbrush, but you have to fold it back the other way and snap the poppers in, and then you've got a perfectly good functioning toothbrush. And the first of these to appear actually was this one here, which was a folding razor. Unfold this way and fold inwards that way. And then we have a working razor. And it folds back into a neat little box again. So the streams there are folding. These are two of my many packs of cards which are a bit crazy. This one is a particularly crazy pack. It's called the Crooked Deck for Crooked Players, I suppose. And it'd be quite hard actually to play a game with them, I think, probably. But that's the idea of the appearance of the card is quite novel. And this strange pack here, I've never had a game with it, but I suppose you could play double snap or double canaster or double bridge with it. Every single card has got actually two values, sometimes the same value as that in that one there, but mostly they have different values to the cards. So either you can be playing on the yellow with your hand or on the white background card. So the backs, on the other hand, are quite uniform. So a very strange idea of a double card, a double game of cards. For the office, we've got this strange thing here, which was invented about 30 years ago, which is a biro with a little ring magnet holding it suspended in the air like that. You can twirl and twiddle it when you're reflecting on what you're going to write in your report, and then write with it and put it back in there as a little parking place for the biro. A nice little desk executive toy. And then when it's drinking time, these charming little pitifalls and tunics and things are for bottles to decorate the wine bottle. You've got little ribbons at the back to tie it up with, and then the bottle itself looks highly decorative. And then you just take it off and put it on the next bottle when you've used it up, either on a sherry or a wine bottle. This one I think is still around. It's a very clever idea for a humane mouse trap. You put the cheese, or actually chocolate people tell me is more attractive to mice, in there. And you set it up with the trap open like this. And when the mouse goes in here to look for the nice smelling food and he passes this point here the weight of his body tips it over and he's then caught in this section here well the whole of that section but this is trapped and you hear a squeak sound it's time to go and release the mouse in the garden or the nearby fields he may mouse trap which doesn't doesn't kill the rodent strange sunglasses without any lensing at all but it just have this blind effect so when you place them in your head you've got no vertical sun coming into your eyes because i can't see anything above me there and um, my eyes are being shielded from the sunlight. Jacob's Ladder has always been a favourite toy of mine, but to have it in a form of a book is a very strange idea, but actually it's quite sensible. It's a little tale of China, and you've got two sides of it to read, but then when you want to read the next chapter, what you actually do is flip-flop the thing into a Jacob's Ladder normal mode of action. Flip-flop, 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 flip-flop down, and now you read two different chapters of the book. So Jacob's Ladder in the form of a child's book. And it works very well too. This is hard to demonstrate in a studio, but this is actually um, a, a super bounce ball inside a very soft, bungy bit of foam rubber on the outside. So when you bounce it hard in any angle at all, instead of going this way, this way, this way, it will always bounce very true straight up in the air because the first bit of the outside edge crushes very easily and it hits then the hard super bounce ball inside. So it behaves like a, a normal ball, just about, but you've got to throw it quite hard to make it work. This was a lovely skill toy invented about 10 years ago and it's never reappeared. I think it's a shame. It's the old washers on a, on a rod, normally in the form of a circular one, but this is a linear one. And providing you energetically turn it upside down very quickly, you keep the things fluttering. The game is to start with just one washer and then put another one on, another one on, another one on, just by unscrewing the handle until you're doing all five, and that takes a bit of skill, or four actually, like that. But that's a good skill toy. The last item is a real curiosity. It's a, a puzzle that a friend of mine made about 20 years ago, and it's got two little marbles inside it, and a pair of trousers has got stitches everywhere. 
and there's no way of getting that out. You know, that's, that's what you're required to do, get them out. It's got a very curious seamstress trick called, I call them reversible running stitches. What you do is you take your fingers in here, which would be the cheeks at the bottom of your trousers, and pull, and the stitches now pull apart, but run backwards, but they'll, and there the marble can come out. And then when you take the edges and pull like that, the stitches close up. So a very, very clever no no novelty that I don't think I've ever seen ever made before or since then. So there's a little 13 range of articles.